Welcome to the city of brotherly love. It's the Nats and their old friends, the Phillies. Seems like forever since we have been here. Opener of a three-game series tonight, and these can be trap games. You might think the Phillies have nothing to play for, but Pete McCannon told his young guys, you've got plenty to play for in September. And for the Nats, they're facing a team that gave the Cubs a big-time headache over the weekend. But the good news is Bryce Harper's okay. Yeah, you can't hurt Steele. Bryce Harper yesterday <laughs> running into Derek Dietrich at second base. You remember the collision? We were wondering, was it his hip? Was it his legs? And was he knocked a little bit loopy? Lee Coons had trainer came out, looked Bryce in the eye and said, hey, you're going to come sit next to me. Talk to Bryce on the plane. He said he's fine. He wanted to stay in the game, actually. He was asking Bob Henley for his glove at the time. So Bryce, fine. He's in there tonight, and we can't watch, wait to watch him play. Yeah, and continue a possible MVP season. Bryce leads the league and is up at the top in so many different categories. It's hard to believe he won't be the most valuable player. He's only missed seven games all year. He brings it every night he's out there. And he was trying to get to third on a ground ball to short with two outs. Shows you the kind of hustle he brings to this ball club. Jordan Zimmerman goes against a rookie here in Philly tonight. And Jordan's been pretty solid. He's coming off a good start. It was that game against the Mets when he left and you thought he was going to get the win. But look at his last seven starts. 4-1 four to one, four to one record, 2-6-6 ERA. The guy he's facing tonight, Aaron Nola, competes very well. 22-year-old stud for the Phillies. He's got a good sinker. One of the better curveballs you'll see this year. Opponents hitting just 164 against Nola's curveball. And hopefully the Nats in a hitter's ballpark now will have Anthony Rendon leading the way. He sits safely in 19 of his last 21 hitting. 345. Lots of walks, lots of hits, lots of runs scored. He's a bona fide leadoff guy right now. future major, major leaguers most probably and it's the Nats against the Phillies for the 14th time this year they have split the first six in this ballpark pretty clear humidity low beautiful night 71 degrees the wind has died down from earlier but there is a definite breeze moving over toward the right side of the ballpark the Nats are eighth in the league and hitting third in runs fifth in home runs and Clint Robinson we welcome him back to the ball club he has done well against the Phils. Two doubles among his ten hits, and he's driven in three with four runs scored. And Clint will be back at first base tonight in that number five spot. Good news is Bryce Harper's in there tonight. The Nats, for the first time, will see a rookie we've been hearing a lot about, 22-year-old Aaron 
Nola. 6'2", 200 pounds, 22-year-old gets the start tonight. Last start on the eighth against Atlantic. Five to nothing win, went seven shutout innings. Gave up just six hits, struck out seven Braves. Last start, I was told his changeup was his best pitch, but he's got a plus-plus curveball, and we'll all check it out together. Number one draft choice, seventh overall player taken just one year ago. Out of LSU, that's where he went after Toronto drafted him back in 2011, but he didn't sign with the Blue Jays. So the LSU tradition of pitchers sent to the major leagues continues with this talented young right-hander. I said the defense for the Hillies behind the Phillies behind Nola Altair Herrera Bogusevic the outfield Galvez Ashy left side Sweeney Howard right side and Cameron Ruff behind the plate. Yeah, net killer Carlos Ruiz getting the night off. Phillies really don't have that many guys in their dugout. They only have six extra men. They haven't called up a lot of guys because many of their youngsters are already at the big league level and playing. And we'll see a couple of them and get you acquainted with them over the next couple of games. 33rd year in the big leagues for the crew chief, Tim Welke, Todd Titchener, Chris Siegel, Mike Everett, first, second, and third. Quiet night in Philly. We'll see if the Nats can liven things up here. First pitch is in there, and it is headed deep out of here if it gets to the wall, and it is just out of here. Anthony Rendon on the first pitch, and it's one nothing. They'll liven things up. Anthony Rendon's fifth of the year. He's now hit safely in 20 of 22 games at around 350. Guys on the bench can ask Anthony Rendon, what does Nola have? And he's going to say a homer. The pitch, he says, you're going to have to find out for yourself. Yeah, there goes the no-hitter. There goes the shutout. Anthony Rendon, first pitch of the ball game. See ya. Here's Escobar. Ball one. Took the crowd right out of this thing on one pitch. <laughs> that was something. I mean, off his bat, it looked like it was going way out of here. And I think the wind kept it from going a lot farther because it's kind of working against anything hit to the left side. Yeah, good call. This was against traffic, meaning against the wind. First pitch of the game. And you're thinking, this is way out of here. Are you watching Altair go back for the baseball? And it just sneaks out of here over the plants. Bent arm swing, good extension. Breaking ball misses to Escobar. He checks in with a 321 batting average. Fourth in the league, as he has been for several days, behind Harper, Posey, and Gordon. And he's also in the top eight on base percentage. That's a high chopper. And it's foul. Two balls, two strikes. So the Nats have hit 153 home runs. Second career leadoff home run by Anthony Rendon. The only home run the Nats hit in Miami won by Matt Dendecker yesterday. This uh, ballpark plays a whole lot different than that. And that breaking ball was hanging upstairs and Escobar hits it well to left. Well, if you're getting a base hit on the Nola curveball, you're doing something right. Opponents hitting just 164 against his curveball this year. And you know, Escobar stays back nice. Hits a bullet to left. So two hitters, two bullets, and here comes Bryce. And taken out of the game yesterday for precautionary reasons. This could be loud. Ninety-two with movement and stayed inside. So Harper first in the league in batting average on base percentage runs. Top five in multi-hit games. He and Escobar each have forty-four. And a high chopper out towards second for Darnell Sweeney. His plays to first base. One out. Escobar to second. 
was so odd about yesterday, him running into Derek Dietrich. He used to be first in the league in collisions, too, but this year he hasn't. And Dietrich was just the wandering second baseman yesterday, not really knowing where to be. He's played a lot of left field for the Marlins. And on a play when he shouldn't have been at second, when he should have been at second base, he wasn't. On a play when he shouldn't have been, he was. And that's when Bryce crashed into him. Yeah. Yeah, no fault to Bryce is what happened yesterday. Jason Worth heating it up with Rendon lately. He's hit safely 12 of his last 14. Worth was on base three times yesterday and six times in the Miami series. Check swing. Check of the runner at second. Took Jason forever to get out of the box. And he's thrown out. Two down with Clint Robinson coming up. This is coming right at him. Nolan's got a good running fastball. It's more of a runner than a sinker. You see it staying on the same level but going right toward Jason Worth. Similar to the pitch he got hurt on in San Diego. That one hit him. This one didn't. Newest daddy on the ball club, Lila Bourne. Clint, a couple of days off for paternity leave. And uh, hope mom and the little lady are doing very well. No balls, one strike to Clint hitting 272. And this ball, inside out swing out to left for Aaron Altair. Inning gets off to a big, loud start with Anthony Rendon, then an Escobar hit. So here's Rendon's second career leadoff home run, number five on the year. The Nats on his 21st RBI on the board, right out of the gate. This Phillies lineup, Phillies 10th in the league in batting, 13th in runs and homers, but a lot of their guys just aren't here anymore. Ryan Howard is 22 homers, 76 RBIs, hitting 228 with 137 strikeouts. So Jordan Zimmerman, 6 and 7 career, 15 starts against the Phillies. Strong 5 and 2 thirds of one run, three hit ball last time out against the New York Mets. Left with a big lead, five and two thirds, struck out six, walked one through 100 pitches in that one. So fastball 93, slider 88, curveball 80, occasional changeup at 87 miles an hour. Here we go. So the defense behind Jordan for tonight's game. Worth Taylor Harper, the outfield, Desmond Escobar, left side, Rendon Robinson, right side, Wilson Ramos. 
behind the plate. And there's Papa Robinson. Lila. Lila Robinson. Good name. Big, big name. <laughs> Congratulations to Samantha. I like it. Mom, hopefully doing well as well. Odubel Herrera, the center fielder, hitting 299 this year. 130 games, 442 at bats. He has stolen 14 bases. 23 year old from Zulia, Venezuela, a Rule 5 guy. The Phillies grabbed from the Rangers last December. Had a nice season. Real nice season. Rule 5 draft, and you're thinking, is this guy going to stick? 299 and eight home runs later, yeah. Yeah, because if he doesn't stick on your roster, you have to offer him back to the other ball club. And the Rangers parted company with a young guy at the age of 22 last year who at 297 at single A ball and then 321 to lead the Texas League at double A Frisco. And there's a good baseball man, a good friend of yours, Pete McCannon. Doing a great job with the Phils. This ball hit well out to center. Michael A. Taylor, though, will run it down, and that ball comes into his glove about 390 feet away. So Andy McPhail took over here. There's been a lot of change around here. Ruben Amaro no longer the GM. Pete McCannon was the interim manager after they fired Ryan Sandberg. And he's done a nice job with the ball club. And Andy McPhail has said publicly that he's going to take his time finding a new general manager here for the Phillies. And if you're going to take your time in your general managerial search, you don't want to get a new GM in place and then rush to get a manager. So right. Pete McCannon has a good chance with what he's done this year with this ball club, in my opinion, to be the manager of the Phillies next season, too. You don't want to rush that whole process if you're trying to turn a whole organization around and get back where you used to be. So right. he's done a great job as an interim manager. He knows the game as, be as good as anybody in baseball. He might be their manager next year. Freddie Galvez sitting 267. And he goes left field. This ball's got some carry to it. Jason Worth over toward the corner reaches up two outs. Kind of in that in between twilight time here in Philly. It arrives a little earlier every night as we get further into September. And Jeep brings us some numbers about run support average since the 21st of July. So Jordan getting plenty of runs from his teammates. 12 and 8 with a 3-3-2 ERA, and Aaron Nola is on that list as well. Not sure if the Phillies are going to score six for him tonight against this guy. Slider right in there to Brian Bogusevic. Haven't seen this young man in a while. We saw him with Houston for parts of three years. The Cubs back in 13. Didn't play at all last year. And then he hit 296 at Lehigh Valley, and the Phillies just called him up last Friday. 31 year old veteran outfielder from the Chicago area originally drafted in the first round by Houston out of Tulane Jordan working quickly here a couple of fly balls and on deck there's the youngster Aaron Altair that was a quick first give Jordan a run he goes into express mode early quick Bottom of the first on the Rendon Homer. One nothing.
Capitals hitting coach, but they probably don't know just how hard Shu works and the amount of time that he puts into his craft. For a home game, Shu told me he gets to the ballpark around 11.30 in the morning. It's a little later on the road. He starts watching film of the opposing team starter for that night to give a scouting report to his hitters. Then around 1.30, he hops in the batting cage working with guys and does that up until first pitch. Then after the game, back into the hitting cage sometimes and spends time discussing and game planning for the next day's starter. Shu told me that he thrives off his guys having success. That's how he has the energy to do this every day on a given day. Matt Williams said that Shu's in charge of a lot of guys. He deals with a lot of different personalities. He does a very admirable job of preparing them every single day. Yeah, I mean, the hitting coaches work as hard as any coach on the staff, and there's so many components that go in to being a hitting coach. From, I mean, you have to know your guy's personality. You have to know their work ethic. You're part counselor. Is he not working enough? Is he working too much? Do I have to tell him, hey, I'm going to lock the cage up? You're getting in your head too much? So, I mean, of all the coaches on the staff, w what a hitting coach has to do is so in-depth. You just see the, the team batting average, and you wonder, is he a good hitting coach or not? But it's so much more than that, dealing with different minds and different personalities and when to kind of prod them to work harder, when to tell them they're working too hard. And he's as good as anybody in baseball. So that's Dan and FP with our Coons.com sideline report. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. So Ian Desmond unable to reach some breaking balls there. Ramos and Taylor the next two. Well, here's an indication of how tough a job hitting coach is. Many teams at the major league level are now adding assistant hitting coaches to give these guys a little time themselves. I mean, it's a huge task. Well, I think that's a good idea. They never can hurt to have another set of eyes. 0-2 oh, to Wilson Ramos and suddenly Aaron Nola throwing strikes since the Escobar base hit. He's retired four straight. 14 RBIs for Ramos his last 20 games. Marlins didn't score in the first at New York. Justin Nicolino and Logan Verrett, the pitching matchup there. Target to jam Ramos, and it's two and two. That breaking ball got a lot of the plate. Wilson Ramos got a lot of it. Nets have their third hit in the first seven batters tonight. And two on the Nola curveball, which, which according to the stats is darn near unhittable. Are you Nell Escobar with a single on the curveball? Now Wilson Ramos extending and keeping his hands back nicely. The base hit. It's Michael A. Taylor. On base a couple of times yesterday with a base hit, a walk, and a run score. There's a front door breaking ball, and it's 0 2. Now you have to be careful of that one that starts a strike and goes way out. Mercedes Benz will track it. Well, coming into tonight, he's thrown 212 curveballs, 146 of those for strike. So that's a good example right there. This is a ballpark where you can be rewarded by going the other way and not trying to pull everything. And they do move him off the plate with the fastball. We'll see if that leads to another hook. It's only 330 down the line here in right, which doesn't sound like a lot. Or pretty standard by other ballparks, but it, it just carries here. The ball just flies here. And that's on the inside edge. Michael A. Taylor can't believe it. Two outs. Inside edge or off the plate in. Let's see what pitch track thinks. Almost right where the third pitch was. That'll bring in Jordan Zimmerman. The more I see pitch track, and the more missed calls I see, I'm starting to come around to that whole computerized strike zone or whatever they're talking about. 
I mean, we see it every night, either way, whether it's the, the other ball club and the Nats getting calls or the Nats hitters and they're not in the, the box at big times of games. It, 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 maybe we should go to the automated strike call. You're know, watching the U.S. Open yesterday. Whether the ball's in or not, I don't know. Start to think about it at least, Carl. What do you think? Yeah, that's uh, for you to make that statement tells me a lot because – you know, you, you and I have been around for a while, and the technology is great. The human element of this game. And that ball, a screamer into the seats. Hopefully everybody okay, but I think a fan got hit with that one. Another thing that is being talked about around baseball a lot these days screening off not with a big screen like right behind home plate but to a certain extent screening off the seats that are right behind the dugouts for situations just like that everybody took a little pause on the field because they know a fan's been hurt 0-2 pitch You know, we all want things to get right in this game in terms of the balls and strikes, as you brought it up. Just what does a home plate umpire do when he stands there? Just call foul balls and P plays it to plate? Yeah. Maybe have a beer in his ball bag or something? <laughs> well, three strikeouts, a base hit. Ramos, a single, he's stranded, one nothing Nats. you. Gorgeous night in Philadelphia. The Nats have an early lead thanks to an Anthony Rendon lead off first inning home run. Join the Nats Saturday September 19th. They will be celebrating Faith Day. Post game player testimonies and stories. Live performances. Gospel music after the Nats and Marlins matchup at 405. To purchase your Faith Day tickets visit nationals.com slash faith. It's been a nice event for the last couple of years. And the Nats will do it again next Saturday. Jordan Zimmerman, first inning, 11 pitches, nine strikes. And we'll have a look at Aaron Altair, born in Germany. Went to high school in Arizona, Philly's ninth rounder. Back in 09, he's been in the minor leagues for a while. Hit a combined 293 at double-A Reading and triple-A Lehigh Valley this year. 14 homers, 67 RBIs, and 16 steals. Listed at 6'5", 215. He gets around late. That hits the screen in front of the Phillies' dugout. A 
another excuse me sing, swing this one by the fills. Four in a row for Jordan Zimmerman his first ground ball out. And the crowd makes some noise for really the one major holdover to their golden year starting about eight or nine years ago, Ryan Howard. They've been swinging the bat better of late. Ryan Howard against Jordan Zimmerman career three for 22. A homer two RBIs two walks eight strikeouts. He was 0 for 35 from August 29th to September 11th. Wow. It was the longest hitless streak by a Philly since 2011 when Raul Ibanez went 0 for 35. But like I said he's been swinging better lately. That ball is crushed and out of here in a hurry. Ryan Howard turns on one, his 23rd of the year. And the 357th of his career. A 23rd home run of the season for Ryan Howard. He stayed back nice, caught it out front. Little top spin to this home run. But the reports about him swinging better were dead on. Here's Darnell Sweeney. 24 year old rookie. Originally drafted by the Marlins, didn't sign, went to the University of Central Florida in Orlando. Dodgers drafted him three years ago, and he was one of the guys who came over in the Chase Utley deal. 284 hitter in nearly four minor league seasons. And it's supposed to have some. Serious pop, and I guess the question is whether he's going to play second base or maybe the outfield. They're trying to still figure him out defensively, but he can hit. Off to a nine for 47 start as a big leaguer, hitting a buck 91. Like I said, he can hit. Sometimes the numbers early don't dictate, though. You know, hey. he's still trying to get a feel for this level and figure it out. First three weeks in the big leagues, huh? Yeah, they get a book on you and they'll wear it out. He lashes one out to center, but Michael A. Taylor right there for the second out. Cody Ashy, the third baseman, will be next. Just so the folks know at home, all the information I have for tonight's game is coming from former Nat Matt Stairs. So if it's wrong, right next door, <laughs> you can blame him for everything. Matty Stairs. And he, he, a former teammate and roommate of mine, has a propensity for making stuff up. So if I say something on the air about the Phillies, it's all for Matt Stairs. And you guys can tweet at him right now, too, if you want. <laughs> He's one of my better friends in baseball, and it's always good to catch up with him. Cody Ashy at 246 with 28 RBIs on eight home runs. And Jordan Zimmerman drops a breaking ball on him. I just wish Nats fans could have seen Matt Stairs at his best. Oh, he could hit. He just had a rough year that year. Got off to a slow start. Took a while to recover. And when you're getting three or four at bats a week, that's a hard thing to do. Just kind of like hitting that curveball there. Well, we've seen two homers. Here comes Rendon, who hit the first.
Bar and Bryce Harper, top of the third inning here in Philly. First two innings for the rookie Aaron Nola, 29 pitches, 22 strikes. Well, in case you missed it and tuned in just a hair late, and it's understandable because that was the first pitch of the ball game. Anthony Rendon hitting his fifth home run of the year, the 153rd home run of the year for the Nats. So you think I get a fastball right here, first pitch? I'm going to say no way. And as a hitter, this is where you sit on something. Sit on a curveball right here. And if he throws it, you get on that. Fastball away, so changing locations. Rendon now, four homers, 14 RBIs. His last 21 games plus one at bat. Hitting safely in actually 22 games now, including the at bat, and hitting safely in 20 of those. And the big curveball, he lays off it easily, two and one. Missing over but low. It's a good take. It's a ground ball if you swing. Rendon's homer was the 172nd given up by the Phillies this year, most in the National League, second most in baseball. And you might be surprised to know the Detroit Tigers playing half of their games in a spacious ballpark, have given up the most home runs, 173. This should be a different kind of series than Miami was, and that's a front door curveball. Rendon gave up on it, and his last four outs for Nola, Nissan will track it, have been strikeouts. Well, this curveball backed up a little bit, but it stayed in the strike zone. And as a hitter, you're thinking where it starts, it's going to go the other way. It didn't. And a pretty good pitch with two strikes to Anthony Rendon, who's been as hot as anybody. Escobar got a breaking ball that was center cut. Hammered it in the left field for a base hit his first time. He now has 153 hits on the year, and that one was right at Herrera, or he would have had another multi-hit game. Two outs. Come out to the ballpark and celebrate U.S. Air Force Day with us. That's delivered by UPS September 18. Marlins in town, 7.05 start on that one. The United States Air Force Honor Guard color team will present our nation's colors. And members of the U.S. Air Force Band will perform our nation's national anthem. So come to the ballpark on that day. It's going to be fun. National.com to purchase your tickets. Next three here. Then the Marlins in. And then after the Miami series, the Baltimore Orioles for three night games starting one week from tonight. One more homestand, right? Yeah, off day on the 24th, and the Phillies will wrap it up at Nats Park. Ten game homestand, ten day homestand. Yeah, nine games, ten days. Well, actually, ten games, 11 days, because the Cincinnati Reds have to come in on that Monday, what, the 28th? That's right. Actually, the 24th, and uh, not his 28th and make up that rained out game from a couple of months ago. So a little uh, bonus home coverage coming up. 2-0 pitch. He's got a Frisbee curveball going right now. But I thought that makeup game was gonna be huge too. Not looking like it. This one down, what do you think? And if it's low on pitch track, you know it's low. Two and one. Rise Harper jacks one to right. See you later. Number 37. Three solo homers in the game, two by the Nats, who bust out on top again. RBI number 86. I thought that was coming his first time up. That cut out. Just as quickly or maybe a little more quickly than Ryan Howard's. Nice turning and 
burning. Well, the whole pennant race thing has cooled off, but Bryce Harper hasn't. And mark it down right now, folks. You're looking at your National League MVP. And if he doesn't win, it's, it, it's a personal thing. Because he's the best player in the National League this year. End of story. Nash ball, upper part of the zone, and Jason Worth in the whole 0-2. It's Bryce Harper's 72nd extra base hit. And he's now scored 105 runs. Worth will take that outside pitch and guide it the other way. I think you said it perfectly before we went on the air tonight, is that you can't lead that many offensive categories and not win MVP. And look at the home run again. Yeah, those against Bryce Harper are going to go far every time. Fastball right down the middle for home run number 37. Three more to 40. Well, could happen by the end of Wednesday night, the way this yard plays. Yeah. And that's Herrera putting away Worth's fly ball to center. Rendon and Harper, a round one by Ryan Howard, 2-1 Nets. Bucks, the Children's National Health System for every home run a Nats player hits this season. Lexus, the Bruce of perfection. So 250 times two tonight is 800 bucks to Lexus. All right. They told me the next time you do that, you have to make up the difference. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they, Lexus is doing okay. Cameron Rupp, the catcher, hitting 233, 0 for 4 career against Jordan Zimmerman. First two innings for Jordan, 27 pitches, 19 strikes. Aaron Nola next, and then top of the order, Oduvel Herrera. How to play right side. What do you got on a, a, a Greg Lazinski comparison to Cameron Rock? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a famous Philly, right? The Bull. Beloved here. He played. I mean, their body types are similar. Their swings are very similar. Everybody that remembers Greg Lazinski. Maybe a little, perhaps a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think he's taller than yeah. Lazinski. They listed this man at 6'2", 258. Fastball up and away. Cameron Rupp was a Texas Longhorn. Phillies drafted him third round five years ago. This hasn't played that much here over the last couple of years. 22 games total coming into this season. 
And he'll get around that ball and pull it to left, giving Aaron Nola a chance to bunt him forward. Let's talk about this MVP thing. There seems to be a growing groundswell of support for Yuena Cespedes. And if the New York media has a lot of influence, he'll get a lot of votes. But he's only played 40 games, and I have a hard time giving a guy 40 games worth of uh, MVP votes. I mean, he's been a lot to the Mets. There's no doubt about that. He got that whole offensive thing over there kick-started. But I think it's Rice's hands down. You can't give it to a guy with 40 games. I, I think it might be closer than you would think based on what you just said about the New York media and how everything's bigger in that city and that ball club looking like they might win the East. And gets into the whole what is the most valuable player mean to you personally when you put that vote down. You know, it, it's been called MVP for so many years. But there have been times when it was more reflective of a player of the year award. Andre Dawson winning for a last place team as we've discussed and other guys winning it on teams that did not go to the playoffs. I think if you're following the Mets and you've seen what he's done on a daily basis, you could get caught up in it. I mean, imagine if we're watching the Mets play every day and we're doing their broadcast and we're watching what Cespedes is doing and how much he's meant to the turnaround of that yeah. club. I can see that. I don't agree with it, but I can see how you get caught up in 40 games. But he'll get some votes. There's no doubt about it. I just think it's Bryce's all the way. Top of the order, Herrera, fly ball to center first time. But really, the foundations of this game have always been centered around what you do over the long course of the season. Now, he was with a different ball club, produced pretty well for the Tigers, but it's a different league. That's the most valuable fanatic, I'll tell you that. <laughs> most valuable mascot, too. It's probably the best reason for Philly fans to come to the ballpark right now. But, hey, the Phillies are playing hard. And, and Matt Stairs told me this over the weekend. Pete McCannon didn't like some of the effort he saw from some of their young guys. He said, look, you guys are new in the big leagues. Maybe you don't realize how valuable September is for what we're trying to do here and for what you're trying to do. And you better get it in gear. Well, I like that. And, and you know, Matt and I talked about that. And you guys, you and him, you guys have been there, done that. But now broadcasting for a while at this level too. I've come to watch these kids who come up, and you don't. I don't care who you are. First round draft pick, fiftieth round draft pick. You don't take anything for granted in the big leagues, and you, you're not guaranteed a job just because you're a September call up. No. You better go out hard and uh, impress somebody. This is when you show what you can do when it counts, ish. And you can make the team out of spring training next year, right now in September. Yeah. It's a wonderful opportunity. And Pete McCannon is one of the best managers I ever played for, so he gets it on all levels, and he thinks outside of the box, which is my favorite part about the way he manages. It's not by the book. You know, Ryan Zimmerman came up for the last 20 games of the 2005 season, at least the ones in which he played, at the age of 20. And he had been a number one draft pick earlier that year. He went out and hit 397. So the Nationals knew who their new third baseman right. was when they went into the following year. Ryan took the whole thing totally seriously, worked hard, and tremendous production. And it can happen for a young man, but if the effort's not there, a guy like Pete McCannon's going to let you hear about it. Well, I just can't fathom getting called up to the big leagues and not trying. I mean, it's what you've worked for your whole life as a player. And yeah. It takes no ability to run hard 90 feet down to first base. Takes no ability to play hard every night. So one thing you can control in this game is your effort on a nightly basis. You can't steer the ball off your bat. There's a lot of things you can't control in this game. But the one thing you can control is playing hard and busting your tail every single night. It takes no ability whatsoever. Yeah, Phillies tightened that up and won the last two games of that series against the Cubs. One of the best teams in baseball. 2-2 two -two pitch with one out. And Odubel Herrera having quite a battle here with Jordan Zimmerman. Since the All Star break, 343. 23 years of age. Is that good? 
Here's a kid who, who's 23, he was in the minor leagues for six years. Swing and a miss. Jordan Zimmerman finally gives him something that's unhittable, a nasty breaking ball in the dirt, his third K of the night. Mercedes Benz will have a look. Through the hard two strike curveball right there at 81, really spun it up there. Herrera thinking he can reach it, the ball just never got there. Ready Galvis, switch hitter, fly ball to Worth first time. Billy's looking for a hit to tie it. Desmond knocks it down, and they're going to send the runner around third, and Ruck will score easily. Ian Desmond did all he could to keep it close, and the ball game is tied up. Freddie Galvis, 40th RBI. Good effort by Desmond laying out for the the bullet off the bat of Freddie Galvis. He stayed back on the curveball, squared it up, one hop seed to Ian Desmond. Bob picked up a little bit of speed when it hit the dirt, kind of shot on him, but a great effort. Tried to keep it in the infield at least. And with two outs, Cameron Rupp off with the crack of the bat scores easily to tie this game up. Keep your eyes on Freddie Galvis, nine for ten, stealing this year. Not a big lead. First pitch high and tight to Brian Bogusevic. Freddie Galvis has good speed. He should have more than nine stolen bases almost halfway through September. Yeah, you would think so. It's been solid for them. He has. Utility guy in my mind, but you never know which direction they're going to move. And back to the whole young guy getting called up playing hard thing. Those guys see that there's not a whole lot in the Phillies organization from a minor league standpoint. So they feel like when they get called up, they've made it. You take the deep breath. But what you don't realize is there's going to be a big turnaround here, and they might go out and get somebody. So it's not necessarily who's in your organization. Mm -hmm. Or who's behind you in the minor leagues? It's who they might go out and get from another ball club, and are you good enough to stick if they do get somebody else? It'll be interesting to see what Andy McPhail can do here. He was a longtime guy in Minnesota, went to the Cubs for a while. Lee McPhail, his father, was one of the great executives in the history of this game. Swing and a miss, and that's nasty. Innings over. So, two Ks for Zimmerman, Billy's tie it, and our freight rail works do up is Clint Robinson. 30-year-old rookie, he waited a long time for that chance in the big leagues. He's made the most of it for the last five and a half months.
Top of the fourth inning here in Philadelphia. Clint Robinson leading things off. Desmond and Ramos to follow. Billy's not in a shift really at all for the left-handed batter. He's kind of playing him as you would normally play. A lot of teams will put the second baseman out there and swing the shortstop up the middle. And Clint Robinson will go straight up the middle. And having a tough time reading that ball was Herrera. And before he could get there, it fell in front of him. Clint Robinson has a base hit. Well, we always talk about how long it took Clint Robinson to get to the big leagues. But he's going nowhere. I and mean, this guy's a major league hitter. There's no doubt about it. He's been a nice surprise for this ball club. And he's played well all season long. So whether it's in Washington, D.C. next year or elsewhere, he's going to be an asset to any ball club as a spot starter or pitch hitter off the bench. In Desmond, I thought he'd jump on the first sort of straight pitch he saw. Took a little bit off that time. Did Nola. That was 88. But Ian saw a steady diet of big breaking balls striking out first time up. Remember, it's a special place for him. He got his first hit as a nat here on April 11th. That's right. He likes the bank. Inside to Desmond. The Robinson had a pinch hit single in the eighth inning of that game. There's that big breaking ball. You just don't see that many young pitchers coming up to the big leagues who have the really huge curveball anymore. Everything seems to be fastball, cutter, slider variety. And there's another big hook that Ian can't reach. And for Aaron Nola, his fifth strikeout. Eight o'clock here in Philadelphia. Citizens Bank Park opened up in 2004. The Phillies are second from the bottom in attendance in the National League to the Miami Marlins. BCFP DK here on Masson tonight. First of a three game series, and we've seen three home runs. Bank is closed. Monday holiday? It looks to me like they're making withdrawals rather than deposits these days. It, I mean, this place was so amazing for a number of years. Ashy, Sweeney, and around the horn go the Phillies to turn a 5-4-3 inning ending double play. So Jordan Zimmerman back to work in a hurry.
15 hits in Syracuse. 12 homers led double A Harrisburg. 20 total for Matt Skoll. Ronaldo Lopez, 94 strikeouts in Potomac. And in Hagerstown, Jose Marmalejos Diaz, 87 RBIs for the Hagerstown Suns. All of those brought to you by PNC Bank. Look forward to seeing those young men climb the ladder toward Washington. Reynaldo Lopez apparently throws 100 miles an hour. Really can't wait to see him. And Marmalade. Marmalejos Diaz. Diaz. It's just his big league name. I don't know anything about him, but he's going to be a big league because of that name. Jose Marmalejos Diaz. Come on. Call him up. Just because of his name. He has 200. Call him up. Aaron Altair. Jack swing ground ball to Clint Robinson first time. Jordan Zimmerman shatters his bat. Ball bouncing out to Desmond. You see the speed of Altair really got down the line, so Ian knew he had to hurry. And that bat just shattered for the first down. Ryan Howard didn't shatter anything but the baseball last time. And got a fastball up and in. Short, quick swing. Cliff Lee, of all people, made the catch out there at left. Looks like he's not quite as in shape as he used to be, but that's a nice play. Still looks good. Ryan Howard, one year removed from a 23 homer, 95 RBI season. So this year he's at 23 with 77 because he doesn't have Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley hitting in front of him anymore. Still the fastest player ever to 100 home runs. He did that 60 games quicker than Ralph Kiner did. Howard did that in his first 325 games. And that was an uncertain swing. On a 2-0 pitch. Obviously guessing and didn't get well, what he it, thought. It's better to look like this and miss it. Yeah. Then put it in play like that. You get another chance at least, even though it's embarrassing as a hitter when you do that. Trust me. Nissan pitch track showing that 2 0 offering. Now it's 3 and 1. Look out here. And a breaking ball off the glove of Robinson. Still a play to be made. He never got too nervous about it and just waited for Jordan Zimmerman to get to the bag. Two down. But to my point, yeah, you look silly on the off speed. You get an off speed pitch later, and the veteran hitter makes the adjustments. It's a bullet to Clint Robinson. And he stays with it nice to Jordan Zimmer. One thing for you younger players if you pick up a ball that you've missed, pick it up with your bare hand. If we could show that replay, maybe get a pitch. That ball almost came out of Clint Robinson's glove. So anytime you catch a ground ball and it goes off your chest, it's called booting a bare hand. So tough play, right? Does a nice job knocking it down, but watch when he goes for it. The ball almost comes out of his glove because he picks it up with his glove. You see him kind of double clutch right there to get the baseball. If you pick it up with your bare hand, you don't miss it ever. Here's Darnell Sweeney. Pitch up, one ball, one strike. Sweeney lined out to center first time. Ninety-three and a big swing. Sweeney's hit three big league home runs in his first 48 at bats. Switch inning infielder. And Zimmerman misses away. of the Utley deal and Chase has been gone for three and a half weeks from Philadelphia now. The deal was not made until the 19th of August. Just thinking while Ryan Howard was hitting just how that must be for him to see it from the glory days to right now. Same with Carlos Ruiz. Yeah. Beginning to end, right? And even for that guy standing in our uniform out in the left field. Quite a change from those days. Well, I mean, but those two have been here from the glory days 
to right now. Yeah. You know, Jason Worth signed a big contract with the Nats, and he's had some good times in D.C., but I'm talking about guys that have been here before. They were great, won a World Series, and now see this. Yeah, it's Ryan Howard's hard. been here since 04. Chase Utley started his Phillies career in 06. And Carlos Ruiz, his first year here was 06. And maybe even some guys that played here for a little bit that have left, like Jonathan Papelbon, who had some things to say today. And he got surrounded by the Phillies press. And evidently feels that he was one of the few guys here who was really committed to getting it done. Tell you what, the one thing I know about Jonathan Papelbon since he's been here is he's all in and he's committed to winning. That's the only thing he cares about. So those quotes today don't surprise me at all because that's what he's about. When you get to know the guy, that's exactly what he's about. Number seven hitter, Cody Ashey. Time given. He, he said a bunch of things. He said, I, I think in this game, the only thing you can truly ask for is to be in a team where you're happy being on and being in an environment where you have a chance and an opportunity to win. So, yeah, he aired it out today in the dugout, but when you have his resume and you've okay. done what he's done and accomplished what he's accomplished, I feel like you can say whatever you want. Yeah. He's backed it up. He has rings to prove it. And getting to know him, repeating myself, he loves to win. That's all he's about. A one pitch. Take him on my team in again. And I really couldn't have said that until I had been around him for a month or so. You always knew he could he competed, but you didn't know what the guy was about, the man was about. And now that you do, you take him any day. 0 2 pitch and in the dirt. The ball deflects off of Wilson Ramos' gear and goes about 25 feet up the line. So easily to second base with two down, Darnell Sweeney. Pretty good read right here on the ball in the dirt. I mean, he left as soon as that hit Wilson Ramos' gear. He was looking for that. Nicely done. The Phillies tied the game last inning on a two out hit by Freddie Galvis. Trying to do the same thing here to take the lead. Cody Ashey's driven in 28 runs. Daylight play. And Ian Desmond really slapped down that tag. Sweeney back in. They might take a look at that one. Why not? Matt Williams has his hand up. Randy Knorr for the millionth time sprints to the phone this year. I wonder how many miles Randy Knorr has got in running to the phone down three steps. Ooh. What do you got? Very close. Ooh. Swipe tag by Desmond. And play will continue. Two two ball game, bottom of the fourth. Still looking? They're still looking. No. Nope. Look at it one more time. Boy, if it got him on the jersey and the shoulder versus the the red sleeve, yeah. he'd have been out. Happened so quick though. Jordan Zimmerman with a strikeout curveball going tonight. Ramos to Robinson, fourth inning over. It's days 2-2. Taylor Zimmerman Rendon coming up.
Michael A. Taylor leads off. Anthony's outside half. Nola 53 pitches, 38 strikes, a good ratio through four. That's at five hits. Michael showed bunt early, tried to get out of the box in a hurry, and now it's 0-2. Protect mode with the pitcher on deck. I love the base hit bunt with no strikes. I don't love it with one strike because if you bunt it foul, now you're battling. You bunt it foul with no strikes, all it is is 0-1 or 1-1 one, one or whatever the count is. Front door, he's going to get called out again on that same pitch. It looked like Tim Welke thought about it for a moment. Strikeout number six. Yeah, William's shaking his head because of what you just described. Well, keep, look how long he waits to call this. I mean, you don't see that very often in baseball. A good 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. And then he calls strike three. Jordan Zimmerman struck out swinging first time up. He was batting with two outs and a runner on. Curveballs to the inside edge can be very dangerous in this ballpark. Jordan Zimmerman strong enough to hit one of those out of here. He gets the fastball in there, 1 1. But he's thrown two to Taylor that have been far enough inside that Michael A gave up. And then they were called. I'm trying to leave right there. Leave slang for hit a homer. Yes, sir. There's a breaking ball that was hanging inside edge, and Jordan hits it hard up the middle, so the Nats have had at least a base hit in every inning. Time for your T Mobile fan photo. You know the drill. Hashtag Nats Couch Cam. You just might see yourself on the tube. That's brought to you by T Mobile. <laughs> Many couch photos we got left, Bart? After tonight, there are 19 games remaining. 19 hashtag Nats Couch Cam photos left. Yeah. Yeah. So, still some furniture to be perused. One on one out, Rendon, one for two with a home run. If the Nats win all 20 games, what would the Mets have to do? Yeah, the Mets would uh, have to play a little better than 500. They let's see, the Mets now they're they're one game ahead of the Nats in games played. They're playing their 144th game tonight. Nats 143. By the way, New York won nothing, bottom of the fourth at City Field. Don't let the facts get in the way of my fantasy here. Uh, well, you asked. A couple games over? I'm just answering your question. They yeah. They gave the score, though. The Nats win every game. The Nats would have to lose probably 10 of their last 19. So Anthony Rendon, that was a fastball that caught him by surprise. Seven strikeouts as Washington tries to figure out the rookie here. Pretty good run back fastball. Started off the plate. I don't think Anthony Rendon liked it. Might have thought it was up, but it definitely came back and got some plate. Escobar base hit to left, line drive to center. Escobar has now hit safely in 14 of his last 15 ball games. And he's not just collecting one hit per night either. Out of play. He's hit 446 during this streak he's on. Yeah, 
It's that time of the year you go one for two when your batting average doesn't go up. O2 pitch. And Cameron Rupp was set up inside. Go for four and it drops a point. <laughs> Escobar's hit the ball well enough to have two hits already. Herrera, line drive carried out to the center fielder last time. This is a chopper to the right side, gets by the pitcher. Escobar digging hard, and the glove kind of sweep there doesn't work for Darnell Sweeney. That's a hit. Has two on, be. two out. Has to be a hit. Trying to make a glove shovel play to first base on the run. Yeah, there it is, base hit. Well, in case you missed it, a little Geico highlight of Bryce Harper's number home run number 37. And RBI number 86. Fastball right down the middle. Bryce Harper ain't missing no space. Bit of a murmur through the crowd right now. Everybody rooting for the Phillies nervous about this situation. Fifth inning. First pitch curveball is in there. Murmur is definitely word of the day. Now. I like it. What's that? Yeah, I like it. It's coaxed the other day, right? Coaxing. <laughs> Coaxing a walk. Yeah. Power zone right there. We saw one strike and away it went. Harper, left field, base hit. Coming around, Jordan Zimmerman, a pitcher who can run. Bob Henley's going to hold him, though. And the bases will be loaded. Altair got to that ball in a hurry. And Jason Worth is next. That's how you hit 333, folks. Use the whole field, pull home run. Then he goes the other way. Beautiful swing by Bryce Harper. The surface here at Citizens Bank is so quick. It's almost like playing on AstroTurf. The infield's cut very low. The outfield's cut very low. That ball got out to Altair so quick that Bob Henley couldn't send Jordan Zimmerman. A nice piece of hit nonetheless by Bryce Harper. Now Jason Worth has a chance to do some damage. Bob McClure, the pitching coach. Worth. Bouncer back to the pitcher on a check swing. And a fly ball to center tonight, 0 for 2. Some road wolves there. Must have, must have trotted up 95. <laughs> Obviously, didn't get hit by a car, so that's good. Even wolves have to pay a toll from DC to here. <laughs> Ooh, front door breaking ball, and Jason Worth couldn't quite get a read on it. Now it's 0 2. This is the backup one that struck out Michael Taylor a few times. It looks like it's going to break across the plate and it just kind of spins and stays on the same plane. And Worth turns on one. Left field. See you later. Grand slam on an 0-2 pitch. And the Nats lead 6-2. to two. That's some damage. And there is some howling going on. Three Nats homers tonight. And Jason Worth jumps his RBI total up to 35 on his eighth home run. Boy, was he quick on that inside fastball. It was up and in. I don't even think it was a strike. Just dropped the barrel on it, and instantly, the Nats are up by four. And one swing of the bat from Jason Worth.
Good at bat by Jordan Zerman, Escobar, Harper. Fifth career grand slam. Flynn Robinson takes one low and inside, 2 and 0. Oh. Brings the dugout alive again. He's in there saying, silly kid. You just locked me up with a curveball, then you threw me a fastball, and I went deep. Hitters will say stuff like that when they come back to the bench. If he threw me another curveball, I was done right there. Thanks for throwing me the heater. Hit that ball, I-95. I did. And Clint Robinson now, maybe a rattled rookie on the mound, walks him on four. And Ian Desmond will be the hitter. Watch how quick Jason Worth is on the heater up and in. Just hands right to the baseball. And muscles it out of here. I don't even think he got that right on the sweet spot. That was down by the label a little bit, but that was sheer muscle by the Nats. Left fielder, grand slam, shake and bake with Bryce Harper. That was fun. Here's Ian Desmond. So Nola, this is his 11th start, covering right around 66 innings, and he's given up 13 home runs, three tonight. Desmond has not been picking up that curveball from him tonight. He needs me to keep growing, especially after just giving up the home run on the fastball. He triples up and strikes out Desmond. Eight Ks for the rookie in five innings. Three strikeouts that inning, but he gave up four. Jason Worth has now hit safely 13 to 15 games. Check out the location. Wow. Since we're talking about location, you can see the location of the pitch. He steered and muscled this ball out of here. I mean, that's not a classic Jason Worth swing. He didn't hit it on the barrel, but just kind of, you know, yeah. muscled like almost like you're hitting a ball out of the rough. And it's in the strike zone up a bit to Cameron Rupp. 
So the Phillies will be hitting for their pitcher in a moment. Bullpen first, and that's right-hander Justin DeFreitas. A two pitch and Rupp not biting on the curveball. Oh, split screen. Greg Lazinski and Cameron Rupp. Let's see if that works. And on deck, that is Travis Darno's brother, Chase, infielder, outfielder. Parts of three years with the Pirates. Philly signed him as a minor league free agent. That is right in there. 86 on the slider. And Jordan Zimmerman, strikeout number six. Slider right there at 86. So Greg Lazinski was 6'1, 220. What's Cameron Rupp? Uh, I think we had him at 6'2, 258. Let me check here. A little bit bigger. Yep. Chase Darno. Boy, he looks like he's running. Huh? 28 years of age. Originally drafted by the Pirates back in 08, seven minor league seasons. Didn't play in the big leagues two years ago because of a serious thumb injury and ironically called up today when Cesar Hernandez dislocated his left thumb for the Phillies over the weekend. 208 career hitter. Out of Los Alamitos, California High School, played at Pepperdine. 0 2 pitch. That's where JT Snow went to high school. Nasty breaking ball. Jordan Zimmerman dealing now with the slider. He has fanned the last three Phillies, two outs. Calvin Coolidge bobblehead day at Nats Park. First 25,000 fans will give one of those. That's from the White House Historical Association. You can thank them on the way in and on the way out. September 21st, Nats play the Orioles 705. Visit nationals.com to purchase your tickets right now. Not Calvin Coolidge. And that one getting Herrera. He just yanked this fastball. Got him right in the knee. Nowhere to go. Seventh batter hit by Jordan Zimmerman this year, the most on the staff. And here's Freddie Galvis, who had that two-out RBI hit off the glove of the diving Ian Desmond back in the third. Marlins have tied the Mets with a run in the fifth, 1-1 one -one in New York. This one to the right side for Anthony Rendon. Jordan Zimmerman, a good shutdown inning after he was presented with a large lead on the Worth Slam 6 2 Nets.
loud swings on a Monday night in Philadelphia. Rendon, Harper, and Worth deep, driving in all six of these runs. And Justin DeFreitas takes over for the Phils. 58th appearance of the year. And not a good ERA. 72 innings. He's had given up 86 hits and 46 earned runs. Yeah, fastball slider change up. Fastball average in 92. Wilson Ramos trying to check in with the second hit of the night. One for two. Taylor and Zimmerman to follow. 0 oh, 2 to Wilson. Wilson Ramos and Justin DeFreitas. The matchup goes two for nine. Wilson a double, two RBIs. And this one high in the air out to center. Herrera going back in front of the track for the first out. Nats box. Rendon, first pitch of the game, out of here. Escobar a base hit to follow. Ramos a second inning single. Bryce Harper two outs in the third, his 37th. And then after hits by Jordan Zimmerman, Escobar, and Harper, the grand slam by Worth. The big blow of this game. Saw something cool between innings. Bryce Harper is 37th home run. Jason Worth flew out the center in the inning. You're thinking he might be still a little ticked off about his at bat. Bryce Harper ran by him and he gave him a really enthusiastic pat on the back as he ran by to go to right field while Jason was going to left. And just to show you how karma goes, then Jason Worth comes up his next time. And <laughs> it's a grand slam. But I mean, little things like that you look for to see if a team has quit. And you're still seeing some life, some enthusiasm, and, and the guys having fun. And you were really worried after the second game, Miami. Are, are they just going to shut it down and take it to the house? Because it would be understandable based on what happened against the Mets and where they are in the standings. And, you know, a 13 and a half game swing or whatever it was, down four now. You know, they were up by four games, now down by nine and a half. But they're still playing hard, and they're still loose. It seems pretty impossible, but this game, as we've all found out over the years, is weird. Yeah, five and a half games in one week can go both ways. One out, sixth inning, 2-2 two, two, to Michael A. Taylor. <laughs> Taylor faces DeFreitas for the first time. The Nats have seen some big hooks tonight. Nine strikeouts by the Philly staff, Desmond and Taylor, three times each. So tomorrow night here in Philly, another night game. It'll be David Buchanan, Steven Strasburg, eight and seven. And then on Wednesday night, Gio goes against Adam Morgan, and Gio will be looking for number 11. And you're looking then at the first three of the four game Miami series. The Miami Delphia Farlands the rest of the season. <laughs> Seems that way. Gio originally with the Phillies. And he's from Miami, so he could be on that team I just mentioned. He could. George Zimmerman base it up the up the middle, right off the mound last time up. So Jordan on the year. Eight hits and 57 at bats. 
First man to score on the Worth Grand Slam. And this ball in the air to right and out of play. Do you think when you're pitching and you're on third for a Grand Slam, it's like being at a casino with a slot machine and you hit a jackpot and you're just watching the runs cross in front of you you're like that's run support that's run support that's run support they don't have buckets for the coins anymore do they, they give you little slips now and you have to go cash them in but that would be like having a big bucket full of coins I'd feel like it was really great between third and the dugout Jordan didn't have to pay any yeah. taxes either yeah. So on a ball in the dirt, he held one ball, two strikes here in the sixth. He's paying taxes. <laughs> they pay enough. They pay in every city they go to an entertainment tax. So they have to pay a Pennsylvania state tax for the three days they play the Phillies. And good luck if you're a Major League Baseball player's accountant. Swing and a miss, and the inning is over. So the Nats still lead by four, three, four, five ahead for the Bills. The children's in an NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. And Jordan Zimmerman has punched Brian Bogusevic's ticket twice tonight. Punching one's ticket, baseball slang for a strikeout. Punched his ticket. You don't hear that one very often. You hear, you know, punch that's where you out. Get, that's where you get punch, punch outs from. Yeah, punched his ticket. Punched him out. Bogusevic, Altair, and Ryan Howard, bottom of the sixth. Jordan is at 77 pitches, 51 strikes. And that ball into the gap, and it's 398 way out there. Bogusevic can run, and he'll stop at second, down by four. Hitter did the punch in that time. Yeah. Ticket not punched that time. Lead off double. Nice swing. Next up, Aaron Altair.
That ball ripped. Well, the Sevic had to stop and make sure it got through. So first and third, nobody out. Billy's box. Ryan Howard, one out homer, second inning, and then the following frame, Cameron Rupp had a leadoff single. Nola sacrificed him, and then Pretty Galvez drove in that run with two outs. So that's it, but Ryan Howard could make this interesting in a hurry, and Jordan Zimmerman has to go to work here. Hit the ball hard twice last time that line drive off the glove of Clint Robinson. Clint able to recover and throw the runner out at first. This is another PSA they should do if you're in the upper deck in the first row. Don't try for a foul ball. Yeah, don't dive. That guy even, almost, even to the side. That guy almost fell. If you have kids, you should be behind the screen or in the upper deck, so there's no harm to your kids. Even if you get great seats and you have kids, you shouldn't sit close. And if you're in the upper deck and you're in the front row and a foul ball comes, let it go. We'll, we'll send you one. I sounded really old right there, but it's true. Two at bats ago, that Green baseball number four ended up in the seats. Upstairs, a chance at first, and barely back in. Altair. Great snap throw by Wilson Ramos. Almost turned that into a double play. Strikeout number eight for Zimmerman. Well, climb the ladder on Ryan Howard, and then the snap throw behind him, Clint Robinson. With a good tag, but a pretty good slide by Altair going to the back side of the base, bought himself an extra click to get in there. Here's the rookie Darnell Sweeney. This guy can fly. 90 minor league stolen bases in the Dodgers system. Jordan Zimmerman in the mid 80s here, sixth inning. Eight strikeouts, one walk, one hit batter, two runs on five hits. That's a base hit. That ball was just sitting on the inside edge. Sweeney turned on it, drives in a run. It's now a 6 3 game. And the time run is going to be in the batter's box. Three hits by the Bills against Jordan Zimmerman here. Darnell Sweeney's been impressive tonight. That deep fly ball to center his first time up, walked his second time up, now an RBI single third time up. Wilson Ramos buying some time for the bullpen right here with this trip. This is what this trip's about. Next hitter, Cody Ashi, who Zimmerman has struck out twice. I wouldn't be surprised if Steve McCaddy comes out too. Rafael Martin. Nationals have nine right handers out there and four lefties. Recent additions AJ Cole, Taylor Jordan, Eric Davis, and Martin a week ago.
like if you get to 85 pitches late in the season, it might as well be 100. These guys got to be gassed late. How banged up all these pitchers are this time of the year. You just don't, you never know. Players, pitchers, everybody out there. How to play left side. I had a conversation with Mike Rizzo about that a couple of weeks ago out in Colorado. And he said it's just hard for people who aren't around the ball club, the clubhouse, and the players every day. To know lo how long this season is and how difficult a thing it is to get through it physically. That ball has hit a ton to right center, and this game is tied after the Nats led six to two. Cody Ashey's ninth of the year. Four runs in the sixth. Phillies fighting, and you could tell Jordan hit the wall real early in this inning. And just like that, they start this one all over again. Cameron Rupp, the number eight hitter, coming in. And Williams, one step up. And stopping. Still only one out in the inning. And if Desmond makes this play two. And the pinch hitter will be another one of their catchers, Eric Kratz. Started with the Phillies back in 2011. Some stops in Toronto and Kansas City, Boston, and Seattle since. He's been DFA'd this year by Kansas City and released and Boston and then released by Seattle. And the Phillies picked him up. And now Matt Thornton joining Rafael Martin. Strike call, it's one and two. Marlins have scored six inning. They lead 2 1 at New York. 6 6 ball game here. And a 2 2 pitch. This one lifted out to center. Michael A. Taylor. Big inning for the Phillies. They put four on the board on four hits.
they're on sale right now. Enjoy the best seats in the house at the best prices. You get access to private on-field events and so much more. Memberships give you year-round Nationals experience. Visit nationals.com slash Nats Plus and join today. 26-year-old right-hander Hector Neris for the Phillies. He appeared in one game at the end of last year from the Dominican. And he's been Phillies property for the last five and a half years. Anthony Rendon. Breaking ball to the outer edge. Yeah, that's a slider. He'll throw it 13% of the time. Split is his out pitch at 86, and the fastball is averaging 93. Let's see if the Nats can answer right here. Rendon Escobar and Harper. Anthony got a fastball left side over in the hole Freddie Galvis and Ryan Howard unable to Get that did the ball hit him on the knee or what happened there? It ball. really ricocheted out like it hit bone or right something on the kneecap. I believe wow That's a hit all the way for Anthony Rendon In between hop on the throw I mean if he would have got him that would have been six to knee not six to three he tried to pick it right there, and it just brought him to his knees. Did it get him on the kneecap? I believe so. Yeah, right on the kneecap. And for that to hurt that bad, there has to be some existing thing going on right there, whether he's got patella tendonitis, a sore knee. Ball off the kneecap hurts, but it doesn't hurt where it brings you to your knees unless you have a sore knee already, a scab on your knee, something to that effect where it'll bring you down like that. I guarantee you that hit a scab. This time of year, if, if you're on base at all, you're a human scab. Just one big scab. Anthony Rendon, two for four tonight. Escobar is two for three. So is Bryce Harper. So they both have their 45th multi hit games of the year. Big leg kick right there. He can steal on this guy. Escobar shows bun. That's way outside. And again. Into the nine o'clock hour here in South Philly, Citizens Bank Park. Bob FP and Dan. Nats led 6 2 on the worth fifth inning grand slam. And the Phillies came out and scored four in the sixth on the Sweeney RBI hit and the three run homer by Cody Ashey. Going to be bunting again here? 1 1. I mean, you, you have a guy that you can hit and run with. He's proven he can put the ball in play. Matt Williams has the bun on because he's afraid of Yunel Escobar hitting into a double play. But, you know, Bob Henley going to talk to him. Maybe there was a sign missed, but this is one of your best hitters. It's proven he could put the ball in play. And a lot of managers will hit and run right here. They'll take the bun off with a 2 1 count. And a lot of managers will keep the bun on 2 1. We'll see what Matt Williams does. Escobar is tied with Matt Duffy and Johnny Peralta for hitting into the most double plays in the National League 21. He might take the bat out of Bryce Harper's hands too. Right side, slow roller. Rendon slowed to let the ball get by, and that gave Sweeney a chance to go to the shortstop to throw him out. Well, let's see if Bryce Harper gets something to hit. He's got a grand slam on deck behind him. He could get something to hit right here. As one of my friends put on Twitter, a 4.0 earthquake. I like it. 4.0, yeah.
Bryce has now scored 106 runs. 37 home runs, 86 batted in. Marlins have now gone up 3-1 on the Mets in the sixth inning. 1-0 pitch. Turned that one over. It was running down and away 2-0. Outer half. Fastball, 2 and 0. We're 2 and 1 now. He's looking for something a little closer he can yank out of here again. This one is a perfectly placed 2 0 fastball on the black. He can have that pitch. He'll swing at it late if he has to, but not right now. Not ahead 2 0. Yeah, Mercedes Benz on the pitch track. He's looking middle in. But right now in this ballpark with that porch, he wants something close to him that he could drop the barrel on. What a rip, and it went straight back. Three and two. And Pete McCann not doing that matchup thing in the seventh inning. He's just seeing if his young pitcher can get Bryce Harper out, not bringing in a lefty. A lot of managers would this time of year with the Hundred guys they have in their bullpen. Off speed. Bryce Harper not about to see a fastball on a full count. So it's two on one out with Worth coming up. It, why wouldn't you do that if you're the Phillies? Be in evaluation mode. See if this guy can get Bryce Harper out. Instead of playing matchup baseball to win one game and maybe get the job next year. Pete McCann is doing what I think a good manager should do in evaluating your players is can you get Bryce Harper out in the seventh inning of a tie game? Can I bring you in next year in a game that counts to get a quote Bryce Harper out? Or do I have to go? I mean, this is what evaluating players late in the season is about when you're out of a pennant race. And I like what Pete McCann is doing here. So many managers manage to save their jobs when they're out of it, and they go match up this time. He isn't. As you look at the muscly muscle man hit a grand slam. <laughs> and just kind of steer it out of the ballpark for four runs. Look where the pitch was. <laughs> One out, two on. And that might have been Carp because he struck out. Strike out had that tapper back to the mound on a similar pitch and said, Well, if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna finish my swing next time. He finished it. We thought he might have finished the fills for the night, but they came back. Now it's time for the Nats to retake the lead 0 2 with one out here in the seventh. Cameron Rupp's gonna give him nothing to pull right here, you'd think. And instead, he pulls the ball to the other side and throws a wild pitch to move two runners into scoring position. Huge. I mean, it changes the whole dynamic of the at bat for Jason Worth. You're thinking about driving in a guy from second with one out. And now you got runners at second and third with one out. Only thing is, you got two strikes. You got to protect, find a way to put the ball in play right here. Infield, way in. Tie game, top of the seventh. And Worth on a pitch down low. It'll take a throw to get him. Two outs. Nasty split. Inning is up to Clint Robinson. Unless they pitch around him and go righty righty. Give Cameron Rupp a lot of credit for keeping that ball in front with a runner on third because that was a nasty split right in front of the plate. 
in a tie ball game in the seventh. That could be a big play by the Phillies catcher. Big pitch by the Phillies pitcher. And then a quick sprint to the mound by the pitching coach, Bob McClure. Uh, do you want to pitch to Robinson or would you like to throw Ian Desmond some sliders? That's what this conversation is about. How do you guys feel? Let's get your opinion. Who do you feel more comfortable with? Because you know Ian Desmond after striking out three times on curveballs tonight is going to see some off speed if they decide to pitch to him. But it's a different pitcher and a different time of the game. Long visit here and just as the umpire gets there they miraculously break it up. There's also that whole thing about walking somebody and not waking somebody up. We'll see what they do. Could be like they're going to throw to him. And it's an 0-2 count. See if he'll chase. He's got some really downward movement on that splitter, doesn't he? Yep. And try to make the perfect pitch as if it were an 0 2 count. Counts even 1 1. Put Robinson another good night, a single, a walk. Seems to be on base once or twice at least every time he gets a start. You start your swing, it's there, and then it's not. That was 95 with a lot of run. That's up for the ball in the dirt right here. I'm not sure why he's walking toward the dugout. That appeared to be about eight inches inside. Actually looked a little better on pitch track. His catcher reaching over to grab that one. And it's three and two with first base open and two outs. Robinson in the air. This will be close over by the tarp. Cody Ashi has room. Nats are gone in the seventh. A base hit and a walk. They strand two. They've left only four tonight. It's the Hyundai seventh inning stretch in South Philly. Citizens Bank Park and a tight game at six.
major leagues hitting home runs, he says. If not for a chance encounter back in 2006 in his hometown, Worth was a year removed from surgery to repair a broken wrist, but even after the surgery, the pain in his wrist was still there. Doctors all over the country had no idea what the issue was, and Worth then with the Dodgers was flying east to get yet another opinion. He stopped off at home in Illinois, which he says he never does during the season, walked out to get the mail, ran into a family friend who was out walking his dog who happened to be a doctor. The friend said, is your wrist okay? Worth said, no, it's still painful. The guy said, you should call those doctors at the Mayo Clinic up in Minnesota. Worth had never heard of the Mayo Clinic before. Gave him a call, got put in touch with Dr. Richard Berger, who at the time was the only doctor and surgeon in America who was performing the certain type of surgery that Worth needed. He got the surgery, ended up getting up to full strength, revitalized his career here in Philadelphia. We know what's happened from there. Worth told me if I didn't run into family friend Joe Whalen, I'd be working at Sears right now. A really cool story, guys. Wow. Got here in 07 and helped with the core of that ball club to rewrite Philly's history. Wow, good story, Dan. Nice. Do you think he said, I'll take a burger with mayo when he got to the clinic? <laughs> oh, two. <laughs> I was waiting for an answer from the field, but no balls and two strikes as Matt Thornton takes on Odubel Herrera. Here. It's funny how things work out like that. But he's had a share of wrist problems, there's no doubt. And he has a guy that he's confident in. And as a player, that means everything. One ball and two strikes. Mm -hmm. Herrera, one for one with a base hit against the Nats left-hander. And he's two for two. Ground ball just like the other one. Phillies are not going away. The Cubs know all about it. And now the Nets are finding out. All right, here's your T-Mobile fan photo. And it's Mary Burke, and she's at the ballpark, and that's a great picture. That might be the winner, folks. I love that one. It's a great view right below the press box there. That's the NATS 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 section. Tweet us your strongest fan photo to hashtag Nats Couch Cam, and you just might see a picture like that on TV. You got 19 more chances. So, Rafael Martin now joined by Sammy Solis. Yeah, we get a lot of great noise below us from sections 313 and 314 when the Nats score. Love it. And I've noticed that when they do that, it has spread to other parts of the upper deck, and even some of the fans downstairs get in on the act. Well, I think it's something that needs to spread throughout the whole ballpark next year and get the whole yard doing it every night that would be pretty awesome scoreboard crew uh, trying to make that happen i noticed they flash it up on the board when our folks in the upper deck start getting after it here's freddie galvis hitting from the right side now 310 on the year and this ball is way out of here just want you folks who sit down below to know that we're a long way up there, but we notice the great things you do at the ballpark and how you celebrate every run that gets scored. Nats fans are the best. I'll, and I'll put their collective IQs up against any fan base in the country because I think they're the smartest fans of baseball for sure. I mean, look at them. They're, they're geniuses right there, right? 1-1. One, one. Very clever. Always on top of things. And that's with all seriousness. I mean, I've watched them grow into a baseball town from the five years I've been here. They get it. 1-1 one one to Galvis, who's 1-3 for three with an RBI. Lays down a good one. Thornton. While he was turning, maybe a quick glance to second, but he knew where the out was and the lead runs in scoring position. Speaking of Nats fans, we'll see you at Winterfest, December 12th and 13th, Walter E. Washington Convention Center. Tickets on sale now. Get some early bird prices if you lock in right now. You can meet all your favorite Nats players. 
watch the presidents run into each other for a few hours in a few days. Take a picture with Santa. Tell him you want a World Series for Christmas. Visit nationals.com slash Nats Winterfest for all the information you need. And we will see if we can match wits with you when you come to Winterfest. Yeah, that's not going to be hard. That's smartest fan base with the lowest IQ broadcaster. It's all right. Pick me up all the time. Bogusevic, the double that got everything started for them last inning. Jordan Zimmerman was coming off the fifth inning, had thrown 77 pitches. And all of a sudden, 17 later, it was a tie game. Bogusevic has faced Matt Thornton 0 for 1 career with a strikeout. He was leaning out over the plate a little bit, and that thing started running inside and chasing him. Mets tied that game. At home in the sixth inning. So the Marlins are hitting top seven, 3 3. That is nasty down and in. One ball, one strike. Fanatics into it. Is he trying to send Bogusevic power? I think he's trying to put the whammy on Matt Thornton. But he gets a ground ball to retire Bogusevic, and Aaron Altair will be next with two outs and a runner at third. Matt Williams. So Matt Thornton gives up a base hit, then gets a couple of outs on the ground and gives the ball to the skipper. The descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Jonathan Papelbon getting some road work in. It's a little too far from the Rocky Steps to get loose. So in the bullpen here, upper level in Philadelphia. And Rafael Martin will take on Aaron Altair. Fastball slider change. Fastball average is 89, but it's a sneaky fastball. It's got some quick arm action. Looks like it really jumps on the right handers. You see him hitting just 208. Nice slider. Yeah. 79 right in there. Oh, 
Altair base hit to left. Last inning got them first and third with nobody out. There's that sneaky fastball. It's amazing how many swings and misses you see. Yeah. In his mind, he's throwing 98. And a one two he blows him away with 89 upstairs sneaky sneaky fast seventh inning over Phillies have stranded for so have the Nats in a 6 6 game. Night. Last 10 starts, and that's spaced out a bit over a, some injury time, but he's 5 and 2 with a 250 ERA. He'll be looking for win number 9, David Buchanan. 2 and 8 for the Phillies with a 9 11 ERA. 6 30, Johnny and Ray, that's extra. Masson, 2. Second of 3 here from Philadelphia. Struck out 13 his last start. His curveball was amazing. Looking forward to that tomorrow. Jerome Williams was with the Nets back in 2007. Houston, Texas, and the Phils last year. He's been with them most of this season. Yeah, fastball 90, slider 87. Curveball change up to complement those two main pitches. First time we've seen Jerome as a reliever this year for the Phillies. Yeah, he yeah, started a game against the Nats earlier. Ian Desmond is two for five against him. I remember from his days with the Nats, the pink love is because Jerome's mom is a cancer survivor. Breaking ball up. And that's way outside. Ball blocked by Cameron Rupp. One ball and two strikes. So it's Desmond Ramos and Taylor here in the eighth inning. And the strikeout. Yeah, Jerome's mom battled cancer for a number of years before eventually passing away. And for the rest of his career, he's Wearing the pink glove in her honor. Very cool. Wilson Ramos. Tonight, one for three. And Ramos, one for four career with an RBI against the right hander.
Williams got the fastball to the outer edge. 1-1. One, one. Low 90s. The Nats have one hit since Jason Worth's grand slam. That was Anthony Rendon with the infield hit last inning. I just don't feel like any leads are safe. It's not a good feeling. This is a ballpark where things can change so quickly. And he was known for his changeup earlier in his career. Two balls, two strikes. 33 years of age now. Right, the guy got to hit his spots, not overpowering by any means. Fastball 90 to 92, has to pitch to a corner, throw off speed when you're thinking fastball, keep you off balance, and stay out of the middle of the plate. When he's in the middle of the plate, that's when the damage is done. And a good take by Ramos to get it to three and two. Nationals have been struck out. 12 times tonight. That one goes fading inside. He threw him the off speed on three and two. And the Nationals have a base runner. Let's see if they pinch run for Wilson Ramos. And I was thinking the same thing. Got three, got three catchers. catchers. Yeah, here comes Trey Turner. Go get him, kid. That's probably what Randy Norris just said. Well, this changes the whole dynamic of this inning. Trey Turner has proven he can steal a base even when the whole ballpark knows he's going. We'll see if he gets a chance to go against Jerome Williams. So Wilson Ramos on base twice tonight. Nets of course have Jose Lobatone and then they called up Pedro Severino. Ray Turner, two for two as a big league base stealer. Secret weapon right there. Yeah, number nine spot due up in a moment. Hey. Williams gave him the good move. You see that Trey Turner just picked a rock out of his hand. I mean, he literally just went straight. Remember that old game operation? He just took it right out of the palm of his hand. Still looking at it. Maybe it was sometimes you get glass in there every once in a while. I don't think it would be that. So it gets lodged inside the sliding glove there? No, he, he's got a bare hand on his right, his right hand. He just dove back in and something stuck in there. And you can see him trying to pry it out between the oh, pitch. Okay. If you land right on a small rock that has a jagged edge, that'll happen. And as you can imagine, it doesn't feel great. Oh, one. He's going. Pitch out. Throw is high. And that gets Turner underneath. Did he come off the bag? He did. He got a bad jump on a pitch out and still stole the base. And it looks like he may have slid past, but he's disagreeing. They're going to take a look at it in the dugout. But how about this? Watch the jump. It's a bad jump to a pitch out, and he still beats it. That's how fast he is. And did he come off? He came off, but he's saying that he got back before he tagged him. And let's all check this out together, the, the last part. That's your challenging. So he does come off. I can't tell from that angle. It looked like he might have got that hand in. Let's see. This will show us right here. Slow it down if you can right at the end. Does his hand get back before he gets tagged? Oh, hard to tell. Well, the crowd's trying to sell it, but You've got Tim Walkie, the crew chief behind the plate, Chris Siegel, 
second year guy at second base who made the call. Is his hand on the bag and the tag on his armpit? It does the tag. Right? Watch here. I don't know if there's enough to overturn it, to be honest. And that's a good thing if I say that, because you know how that goes always. I have no future as a replay review guy. None. Do you see his hand is all bloody? His right hand, he's got blood on his pants. His hand is bleeding, so he did get a rock in his palm sliding back. Look at that. Here they come. He's out. <laughs> Base is empty, two down, and now Michael A. Taylor Try to get aboard for Matt Dendecker. I mean, it's unfortunate he came off the base, but what I'm taking out of that is, is a guy just got probably the worst jump he's gotten since he's been here on a pitch out and still would have been safe if he didn't slide past the bag. I mean, that's impressive speed to yeah. outrun a mistake like that at the highest level from Trey Turner. Too bad he couldn't have stayed on the bag, but look at his hand. Wow. I don't know what he slid into on that first slide back to the bag, but that shouldn't happen. Two and two down to Michael A. Taylor. And you saw him, maybe that's a scab that was open, but you saw him picking at something, you know, after he slid into the bag. That's when you've got to have a pair of batting gloves in your back pocket now. Two, two, and a good swing to right. Ball backing up. The right fielder onto the track, and Bogusevic has it. That's got a one-out walk. Could not keep the inning alive. Bottom of the eighth coming up. And that's Center City here in Philadelphia. Beautiful Monday evening here, mid-September. The Nats had a big lead, 6-2, and worth it a grand slam. Jordan Zimmerman couldn't keep it going, and right now we're all tied. Check out MLB.TV Premium. Keep up with the pennant races in true HD. Watch every out-of-market game live on more than 400 supported devices. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking, widget, and more visit MLB.tv. Nats will come with their fourth pitcher of the night. That will be Blake Trinan. A fastball average of 96.3 miles an hour. Slider 86.7. Two pitch guy. 50th appearance for Blake Trinan on the year. 25 walks in 57 and a third. Opponents hitting 267. Righties 200. Lefties 347. So Darren Ruff will be hitting for Ryan Howard, who we're told now has a left knee contusion. So that baseball 
smoked him pretty well in that kneecap. Yeah, it brought him to his knees. So Darren Ruff in as the first baseman and hitting against Blake Trinan. 0 for 1 against Blake with a ground ball out. Key for Blake Trinan, as it always is, throwing strikes, working ahead, attacking the strike zone, making them put the ball in play. 2 1, high bouncer. Desmond, good communication there with Escobar. Shortstop, all the momentum coming in for the first out. Darnell Sweeney will be next. This is where you got to throw strike one. He just did. Yeah. And he throws a strike to Clint Robinson. Two quick ground ball outs. Bringing in Cody Ashy. The reason the Nats are not ahead in this game. He tied it two innings ago with a one out, three run homer deep into right center. The Ashy ninth homer of the year, 31 RBIs. By the way, he was the possible pick to click for the Bills. With one for three tonight, he is six for 15 career against Jordan Zimmerman. And that was the first time he'd hit a home run against him. Ashy 0 for 1 against Blake Trinan. Good sign. Wow. Down and in nasty. Nissan will track it. That one will short hop. And over the screen. That's how much action Blake Trinan can put on a ball. And this ball to the right side for Anthony Rendon. How about that? Blake trying it, and he's going well. Ground ball outs. Three of them right there in the ninth. Pitcher spot, then the top of the order. Escobar, maybe Harper in the top of the ninth inning. And we invite you to tune in with Johnny and Ray 
to Nets Extra Post Game. It's presented by Who But WB Mason. With this one's over tonight. Second base will be Andres Blanco as the Phillies go double switch. He'll be batting in the number nine spot. And their new pitcher, right hander Jenmar Gomez. Yeah, 61st appearance for Jenmar Gomez. That's a career high for him. So he's just had not every time he goes out there, 44 last season. So and you see what the league's hitting off of 282 fastball slider. He'll cut the fastball on occasion, change up. Fastball average is 91. Let's see if Matt Dendek can get this party started here in the end. Had a home run in this ballpark earlier this year. Dendecker is 0 for 2 career against the right hander Gomez. Casey Jansen getting hot. Den Decker as a pinch hitter, four for 12, a homer, two RBIs. Good eye gets the count in his favor, two and one. Hit the only home run by either team in the Miami series. Yeah, fastball right down Broadway and turn the fan on. Right after Dan had a great report about how that leg kick has added extra pop to his swing. Gomez stepping off, taking his time, getting back and ready. Nice pick by Tony Tarasco. Off speed pitch, hit her way out ahead. First base coach right on time. But the throw into the uh, fans came up a little short. Yeah. He needs to cut off man, at this stage of his career. <laughs> the nice usher just picked up the ball and gave it to a fan. Two and two to Dendecker leading off top nine. Swing, a foul tip, and the first out. We get in on all the baseball action with Mass and text the word Nationals to 29292 for team alerts, chances to win exclusive prizes all season long. Or at least for the next 19 games, and meet and greet with your favorite players too. Again, that's Nationals to 29292. There's Anthony Rendon, who's had a two for four night. Rendon, one plate appearance against Gomez, the base on balls, and the breaking ball is in there. That strikeout by Dendecker, the 13th out made by the Nats tonight on strikes. Oh and two. Realized about halfway through that swing that that wasn't the pitch he wanted. He tried to slow it down. Having a good laugh about it. So naturally Gomez would go in there again. Short arm dart throw. That ball's getting on these guys quicker than that 92 looks. Oh 
over and low, 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball, well hit, and it's a three-hit night for Anthony Rendon. Well, it's a, it's a good lesson for you younger players. Ryan Howard tonight had a weird swing and came up after that. A couple pitches later, hit a bullet to first base. Anthony Rendon had a weird swing and now gets a single to left. So you don't give up on an at-bat just because you look silly on one swing. There's still a big strike or a big pitch left. And... Those two guys tonight, really good example of how you stay with an at bat. Talking into their gloves about something. If Major League Gloves could all get together and write a book someday, it would be fascinating. Of all the stuff they've heard, yeah. I'd buy it. Here's Escobar. And after all that, here comes the pitching coach. I think I'd name it Glove Story, probably. Glove Story. <laughs> yeah, I'd buy it. I just don't know what they would write with because they don't have hands. Adam Lowen. What are their two lefties? The you know, entire infield about yeah. to be visited by Tim Wilkie. A lot of discussion going on for you now, Escobar. I mean, he's not going to bunt. The hit and run is definitely in play. Maybe the guy on deck having some influence about that conversation and trying to get the lefty hot in the bullpen, right? Okay. Yeah, no way Bryce will be facing Gomez. So the Nats with the lead run aboard here, one out, top of the ninth. Yeah, they're checking for the hit and run. Announced crowd at 15,402. Very quiet at the moment. Murmur. 19 hits, 12 runs. Are they murmuring? Some are. Now the count in Escobar's favor. You can see, you know, how he took that pitch. He's in pull mode right now. Just by the way he took it. His front shoulder flew out. He's thinking about pulling the ball hard to left and hitting the home run. You could tell when he dives across on takes and he's thinking about going the other way. And smart pitchers can pick that up. That's how you read hitters on takes. They're telling you what they're going to do. 2-0. and oh. and By the way, with Escobar right in the middle of it, the top three hitters in the lineup tonight, seven hits, and counting a Harper walk on base eight times, and then the guy hitting behind them has a four-run swing on his ledger tonight. 2-0 pitch. Escobar couldn't get it. That ball diving on him. Trying to pull it. And more than any hitter on the Nats team, he, he predetermines what he wants to do before he gets into the box, meaning I'm going to pull it this time up and try to do some damage, or I'm going to hit behind the runner. Maybe he just wanted to take a strike to pull it. We'll see him change right here. That's right on the edge. Perfect pitch by Gomez. Gets the count back even. Well, this is a big pitch coming. 2-2 two -two count. If it gets to 3-2... A lot of skippers will start the runner just to stay out of the double play, but you have to get the 3-2 first. Escobar, double play ball. 6-3, we're going to the bottom of the ninth. The 22nd he's hit into this year. Most in the league, and now it's up to the bullpen.
Pirates coming up in the bottom of the ninth inning. So the game summary, Rendon a leadoff homer worth the grand slam. Bryce Harper has hit his 37th. Yeah, lots of taters tonight. Start on the first pitch of the game. The very first pitch, Anthony Rendon went deep. Then Ryan Howard joined the party with his 23rd. Jason Worth with the big one after the Bryce Harper home run. That was a grand tater. And Cody Ashey joining the deal with a three-run shot to tie this one at six. And that's where we're at heading into the bottom of the ninth inning. Casey Jansen takes the hill. And for Jansen, his 43rd appearance, ERA up to 514 with some recent struggles. First man up, the catcher, Cameron Rupp. First career at bat against Casey Jansen. On the double switch, Andres Blanco is next, and then Odubel Herrera. Boy, you're leading off the bottom of the ninth in a tie game and an inside pitch, and you, you got to let it hit you. Can't get out of the way. There is no dodgeball in a tie game in the bottom of the ninth. Mets have taken a 4-3 lead at home against Miami. They're batting bottom eight. Two and one. And rocked back and forth a time or two too much for Cameron Rupp. Ball three. Trying to end it with that hack. Full count. We're up tonight, one for three. Second inning run driven in by Freddie Galvis at that time. It was a 2 2 game. Swing and a miss. 90 down in the zone, one out. Nice job coming back behind the count. Challenge fastball at 90. And Cameron Rupp might have got a little too big right there and slowed himself down. Andres Blanco is 0 for 1 career against Jansen. Hitting 304 on the year and 181 at bats. Switch hitter, this guy's at 364 right handed, 270 left side. Good curve. Wow, that thing really looping its way in.
two and two. Let's see what they go with here in a two two count. Fastball away. He does. Lobaton wanted it. You could tell by the reaction. He didn't think it was down, and he framed that one really nice. And Tim Welke wasn't buying it. it looks like Welke got it right. He's going to be called out on strikes. Blanco thought he had a walk, thought it was low, and it's two down. Nobody on. I think that one was lower. And Jose Lobatone just stole strike three. Watch this one. It has to be lower than the last one. Wow. It is. See the six and seven? Six was a ball, seven lower in the same general vicinity, and it was a strike. Huh. So Casey Jansen gets the first two. Matt Williams gets the ball from him. Odubel Herrera coming up. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. Tie game. Gorgeous night at the bank, a lot of offense. And we'll see if Felipe Rivero can get this ball game to the top of the tenth. He'll be in to face Oduval Herrera. For one career against him with a single. And a swing and a miss. And if I was a scout of a team that was in need of a closer, I would definitely call Mike Rizzo about this guy. Mets have closed out a 4-3 win over Miami. And right now, the Nats are 10 out. They have won eight in a row. One ball, one strike. I said that night when they came back from 7-1 that as a ball club, when you do something like that, you feel invincible. And yesterday, they had, they were down by two, two outs, nobody on. Base hit, base hit, Daniel Murphy homer. They won. And when you get that thing going as a ball club, you just feel like you can win any game. And if you don't, you just ran out of time. And they have that going right now. They, they don't think they're ever out of a game. They've been there, done that against the best teams. They've come from behind as much as anybody in baseball this year. And 
they just have that momentum going that we've seen here before over the last three or four years. You get that horseshoe and, and you just feel it as a ball club, you know it's just a matter of time before you come back. We saw it with all the walk-offs in a row last year with the Nats. The Mets have that thing going right now. It ain't going anywhere. There's no collapse in their future. They, they, mean, they are rolling. They know they're rolling. Their confidence level is high. There's no stress involved in their game. They're just playing baseball. They're not thinking about anything. Standings, yeah. we, if we do this, we do. They're just playing. And Here's they're something. having fun and they're confident. Here's something about the Mets that might amaze you. They are now 22 games over 500. It seemed like it happened just like that. 22 over. And time requested by the hitter. <laughs> Big breaking ball. Yes. And with this one going to extra innings, the Phillies are down to their last six relievers. The Nats have eight remaining. Bryce Harper will lead off in the top of the 10. They've split four on the road, perfect at home, and the right-hander will be Dalier Hinojosa. Yeah, fastball 93, slider 85. Change up 86, 10th appearance. You see the ERA, nice, 0 0.66, and opponents at 143 off Hinojosa. That's yes, right. 29 years of age from Isla de la Ventanud. Cuba, and he is a big league rookie. He was with Pawtucket AAA of the Red Sox last year. So Bryce Harper, along with the other Nats, getting his first look at this right-hander. Bryce, a good night. Three times more on base this evening. Fastball up in the zone, homer, single, walk, RBI, two runs scored. He's got four multi-hit home run games this season. Five would be Bueno. Deep in center. Harper goes upstairs and can't get to the 94 fastball. Phillies retire him for just the second time tonight. 
tried to get on top. Those go a long way if you can get on top. It's just hard when they're that velocity. This could be fun. Jonathan Papelbon, and when he runs in from center field, it should be something to see and hear in Philadelphia. Despite, uh, despite the small nature of the crowd, they announced 15,000 here tonight. I'd say maybe half that number actually here for the game, and many have left. So worth one for four with a grand slam tonight. And he'll step out. And then Jason not biting on the breaking ball. One one. Pretty good one, too. That's where you bet the house on a fastball. He throws you anything else, so what? Goes to strike two. And here comes a fastball. See if you can get it to the outside corner. Yeah. Same way here. Fastball all the way. Try to hit your second homer. At least try to barrel something up, hit it hard, let the rest take care of itself. Yeah, he likes the 3 1 count. And there it goes. See you later. Way out of here. That might be about 80 feet beyond the 374 mark. And Jason Worth has five RBIs in his old ballpark tonight. That was a far one. You don't think guys think that? An extra innings on a 3 1 count that already have a home run? You're crazy. Got all of it. All of it. Little reaction in the third base dugout. Everybody fired up. Jason Worth with his second tinker of the night. So he goes from Larry leadoff to a true four hitter with two home runs, a grand slam, and a solo shot to put his ball club ahead. 108 on the hit speed. Wow. First time he's done it in two years and one month. Happened in July of 13 against the Pirates. That's a strike on the edge to Clint Robinson. No balls, two strikes. So the Nats lead 7 6. Could you write a better scenario than Worth putting the team ahead and then? Papelbon coming out to try to save it. Well, Jonathan asked me last night in the elevator who he thought would get booed worse, Jason or him. I said, dude, are you crazy? You're going to get crushed tomorrow. <laughs> he started laughing. Like, let's not even be close. Jason doesn't get booed anymore in Philly, barely. Yeah. I said, you're going to get pummeled. I said, if there's anybody there. But whoever's here probably waited around for this moment, and it should be interesting, and we'll have it for you when he comes running in. Base hit left field. Great swing by Clint Robinson. Another whole hum, two hit and a walk night for him. Hey, check out the Tater, the second earthquake of the night. This one was not 4.0 on the Richter scale. Hey, this was just wow. absolutely murdered. Yeah, hey, don't even try to catch that. So worth two tonight, nine on the year. That was number 195 for him. The 
Brady and Desmond was going for it on that swing. Phillies have done nothing but flip breaking balls away to him all night. Striking Ian out, swinging four times. Counts even, 1-1. One, one. Desmond looking for some contact here. Staring at five is not easy. Two and two. Four hundred and thirty four feet I'm seeing on the Desmond on the around the Fourth homer. Maybe I'm trying to foreshadow something with that comment. Let's see. Just want some contact. Hard contact. Ooh, that pitch was hanging. And Hinojosa, lucky to get a new baseball back. Jose Lobatone is next. Came in for Wilson Ramos after Trey Turner ran for Wilson, eighth inning. 2-2 pitch, and Desmond, he'll roll one over into left field. Three hits in a row. So we in a lot of topspin on that baby, got through in a hurry. And here's Lobatone. That's beautiful, man. You're staring at five strikeouts, and you put the ball in play, shorten up your swing, and now you go from an 0 for 4 to a 1 for 5. I don't think people realize how hard that was to do right there. It takes a very mature player to stay with it and do what Ian Desmond just did. Guys strike out four, they're striking out five. They can't even see the ball their fifth time up. Your mind's going so fast. I think with everything that has happened to him this year, especially in the first half, defensively and offensively, we have seen how strong oh, yeah. a personality, how mentally strong he is, the leadership qualities of Ian Desmond throughout this season. He's been stand-up about everything that's happened this year. Never ducking anybody after an error or after a tough game. But sometimes you find out a little more about it. I mean, we already knew a lot of this about Ian. Yeah. But sometimes you find out a whole lot more about a guy when he's not having a silver slugger season or anywhere near a gold glove season. He has really some kind of personality on this ball club. Hey, whoever gets him next year is getting a good one. Two on, one out. Lobatone the hitter. And he has been the forgotten man the last couple of weeks. There was a while he was catching about two out of every five or six games. But it's been almost exclusively Wilson Ramos lately. 23 hits, three homers, 14 RBIs this year. Fast ball, punched out, two down. Michael A. Taylor will be next. Hey, Tim Wilkie thought about this one a little bit, too. He literally punched him out. Michael A trying to turn an 0 for 4 into a 1 for 5 if he can. And it'll be to the left side. Cut off by Cody Ashey for the good play. All right, the worth homer is the difference. We'll see if a Papelbon save attempt can make it stand up. One ex Philly hits one a mile. Another ex Philly on his way from the bullpen.
many people here. They booed him, but it just was not a tidal wave at all. And she at least one it? Philly fan wishes he was still here. Elvis Bogusevic and Altair for the Phillies in the bottom of the tenth. Yeah, it was a murmur. It wasn't even a boo. It was weak, if you want the truth. I was looking forward to a little bit more, even with not a lot of people here. I know. I think Jonathan Papelbon will tell you he was looking he was forward. disappointed. He was looking forward to getting really, really booed today. Yeah, yeah. Because he likes stuff like that. Well, All right, let's play baseball. Yeah, too bad you can't conjure up 40,000 for 30 seconds to see what it would have been like. So here's Freddie Galvis. First ever at bat against a former teammate. Escobar on the grass at third. Outside. In the strike zone, popped up over by the dugout, and it just can't come back enough. The only thing that's bad about coming into situation from a crowd standpoint for Papelbon, you can hear every person that's screaming that's sentences true. at you, where when there's 30,000 people, you can't hear individual fans screaming at you. Right now, yes. you can hear that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy that's had too much to drink here in the 10th inning. He's hearing phrases and sentences with commas and exclamation points. A lot of exclamation points. <laughs> one ball, one strike. And that ball is hit to right, and this game is tied. Freddie Galvis homers off Papelbon, and this game is 7-7. Freddie Galvis, seventh homer of the year. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Looks like it was a split and it just stayed right out over the plate. Galvis caught it out front. The Phillies are fighting tonight. They're not going anywhere. All right, when you think this one's over, you got your closer in. A leadoff homer in the top of the 10th ties this one at seven. Wild game here in Philadelphia. Wild. Here's Bogus Sevic. And he was trying to go back to back with that swing. Jonathan Papelbon gives up his sixth homer of the year. Good action on that one. No balls, two strikes. You saw the reaction from Papelbon after the pitch. He kind of waved his hand like that's the one I tried to throw to Galvis. That one was a good split. The one to Galvis just stayed right out over. Close. Thought he had him. Swing, a foul tip, and out number one. Now the rookie, Aaron Altair. Jonathan Papelbon's first blown save of the season. Go figure. And had 23 without that happening.
Pitts line and has 79 on the breaking ball, had him buckling. And the 0-2, and it looks like it hit him. And that's the winning run aboard with one out. Pretty good wheels, too. Right, just a two seam fastball gets away gets him on the back elbow and there's the winning run on board for the Phillies and Altair can fly. Now Darren Ruff replaced Ryan Howard earlier in the game when Howard took a one hop throw from short off the kneecap. Rough seven home runs, 27 RBIs on the year. Up and away. Talked about the speed of Altair. He stole 116 bases in the minor leagues. 16 this year at double A, triple A combined. Ball two. Hot shot. Desmond can't get it. Still a chance at first. Safe. And Clint Robinson couldn't squeeze it at the other end. It'll be two on, one out. Well, that ball was hit real hard, D and Desmond. And this infield, I talked about it earlier, is one of the fastest in the league. And you see that kind of come up and bite him. He stayed with it nice, and I still think they have him at first. Let's see. Would he have been out? had Clint Robinson hung on to this baseball it was going to be close I don't know I think when I was looking at first base umpire Todd Tishner he was he said safe before the ball was on the ground he did point to it after but he initially just said safe they gave Ian Desmond an error for that tough call tough play play. and here's Jeff Frank Cor batting for the pitcher that is way foul and way up there. Let me get the crowd charged up. Well, maybe that quote we showed you earlier from Jonathan Papenbaum got the Phillies charged up about he was one of the only ones that wanted to win and one of the only guys that was competing on a daily basis. Gotta wake the ball club up, trust me. And Frank Core will pop it up to the right side. And unreachable. Jeff Frank Core on the year, 12 homers, 43 RBIs. He's 11 for 23 as a pinch hitter. With a home run and 11 batted in. But it's 0-2 here. And he had to go hacking after that close enough. Yeah, funny thing about that split that Papelbon threw. Freddie Galvis usually he saves that split for runners in scoring position. We need to get out of the jam. They usually just go fastball, fastball, occasional slider to a lefty. Got that split a little earlier than normal and paid. Frank Cor is one for five career with an RBI against Jonathan Papelbon. 0-2, one out, two on. Frank Cor in swing mode, deep into the corner. Bryce Harper. That's a fair ball that he catches, rifles it into second, tagging for third, all tear. And Bryce Harper just saved the ball game, at least for now. Well, he saved the game 
And I'm assuming it was a great play. I mean, this is a game saver by Bryce Harper. He disappeared and I lost sight of him. The, all the all the ballparks these days with the configuration of the stands have blind spots down the lines. So I was watching the first base umpire Todd Titchener. The first thing he did was call it a fair ball and then he gave the out sign. Cody Ashi now. First and third, two outs. He was hopping all over a pitch upstairs. Where they're getting some rips in, aren't they? Defensive catcher back there, runner at third. Guy who throws a split. That was a disappearing pitch. Strike two. Runner at first going. Hard hit ball right side. Anthony Rendon will play some more. The Freddie Galvis home run ties it and it's 7 7 into the 11. By Jason Worth, you're thinking drive home safely, everybody, and have to take a one run lead. Jonathan Papelbon coming in. He hasn't blown a save all year. Well, you were wrong. A split right down the middle to Freddie Galvis, seventh homer of the year, ties it at seven. And we continue with Luis Garcia. Yes, nearly 60% fastballs for Garcia. 64th appearance, 375 ERA. 57 Ks in 60 innings. And Danny Espinosa will bat for Jonathan Papelbon here. Jeff Frank Corr stays in the ball game. He's in left. He thought he had a walk-off knock. We see his fastball average in 96 miles an hour. He's got a good one. Danny Espinosa 0 for 2 career against him.
Phillies have one player left on their bench, Carlos Ruiz. The Nats still have Tyler Moore, Dan Ugla, Wilmer Defoe, and Pedro Severino. So the Phillies have more relievers. Actually, the Nats still have more relievers than the Phillies, who now use their seventh guy. Nats have used seven pitchers. It's one of those September games when anything goes. Doug Fister, one of the remainders. Two and one. Seven home runs in this game. So I can yes, my scorecards. Right. Four by the Nets. Actually, four. Yeah, four by the Nets and three by them. Anthony Rendon. I guess it was going to be a home run night when a guy goes deep on the first pitch of the yeah. game. Danny Espinosa, good eye, good at bat, lead run aboard. Top of the eleventh. Rendon, Escobar, and Harper now, the next three. Okay. Anthony Rendon, 0 for 1 career against the right hander, Luis Garcia. Could bunt right here, but you just walk the guy, so you really don't want to give a ball club a free out on a guy that can't throw a strike. And you, know, you could take out of a bunt stance in this situation, but to, to give somebody an out when the guy can't throw a strike, that's something a lot of managers won't do. You got a guy with three hits in the batter's box, and he's got a home run tonight. Yeah. You're thinking, okay, hit a gap and watch it. Uh, watch Danny Espinosa run. And the ball gets off the glove of Cameron Rupp. No need to bunt anymore unless you want to get him to third. Espinosa to second base. Bob Hanley going to talk to Anthony Rendon right here. Right? It's got to be a pass ball. He was yeah. trying to throw to first. FP, it looked to me. He was squaring for a throw over there and didn't catch the ball. Maybe Anthony Rendon will swing away here. Let's see. Yeah, he can give you a grounder the other way, and you might get, as you call it, the bonus plan if it gets through. 2-0 pitch. Showed bun again. 3-0. If he squares around 3-0, I might fall out of this booth. Get me down. I'm in the third row right now. You want to come get me? Cool. Might have been a deep. I think he was taken out of a month stance. Three one pitch. Fouled it straight down.
Rendon in swing mode off to the right it goes. Rendon back to the pitcher and stopped by the shortstop Galvis to keep Danny Espinosa from possibly scoring. Fourth so hit of the Rendon night. Rendon gets it done. Yeah, four hit night, three in a row. Fourth hit, he's got a home run and he swings away in a 3 2 count right back up the middle. And so he gets the run of the third, and you're thinking, that's getting through, but Freddie Galvis. Who covers as much ground as any shortstop makes a beautiful play to keep this a tie ball game. Nice play by the Philly shortstop. Infield has to come in. Yunel Escobar. And right now, where Andres Blanco is playing, they're giving Escobar 80 feet of room on the right side of the infield. had Rendon trying to bunt and if anything it turned out a whole lot better thanks to the pass ball then the base hit this is where you know Escobar usually thinks about going the other way and if you look at where the infield is playing him he's got the whole right side they're holding Anthony Rendon on look at this it's right where you know Escobar loves to hit the baseball. And the bouncer, the throw home, gets away. Everybody's safe. And winners will end up at first and second. Danny Espinosa comes crashing into Cameron Rupp. And the Nats lead 8-7. to seven. Well, Blanco decides to go home on this a chopper off the plate with Danny Espinosa's speed really had none chance this was going to have to be a miracle play he had to hurry the throw through a short hop there's no way you can pick this straight over the top into the ground good hustle by Espinosa a little collision there at the plate and so once again the Nats take the lead on a chopper off the bat of Unel Escobar give Anthony Rendon credit for hanging in there in a 3-2 count hit the ball back up the middle getting Espinosa to third now the Nats are up by one. Phillies will go to their eighth pitcher, left-handed Adam Lowen, to face Bryce Harper.
be facing the left-hander Adam Lowen. Yeah, 13th appearance, ERA at 853. Lefty's hitting 429. Gets Adam Lowen. Fastball 92, slider 82. Change up, which Bryce probably won't see at 85. He gets a breaking ball. Pitcher with a skate save gets the out at second. Thought about third for a moment, and the fielder's choice. And that's only the first out. We'll get runners back to first and third. Can he hit three? We'll show you the first two by Jason Worth. This one, the grand salami, he kind of muscled out of here. Steered it around the foul pole. Four RBI, and this one, he didn't muscle anything. Just caught it clean, clicked it. For a second home run of the night. And he's getting booed again, so that's a good thing. Means you're having a good night. There he is. Those aren't howls. Those are boos. May of 2008 against Toronto. His old ball club, old, old ball club. Jason Worth had a three home run game. Of course, he was a Philly at that time. Well, the way things have been going, what lead is safe? Got to get this next run in to make it 9-7. Way inside. And Worth athletic to get out of the way. And Cameron Rupp, quite a reach to get it. A nice stop right there. That was headed for the screen. And that was about to be a 9-7 game. Jason Worth is wondering how this didn't hit him. Look out. Didn't he have one of these yesterday in South Florida? Baller was chasing him. Yeah. One ball, one strike. Wow. Cameron Rupp fighting that one. Lowen is a former position player who from 2006 to 2014 was in the big leagues for a limited time with Toronto. Baltimore before that. He's kind of going back and forth. And... Uh, Pitching numbers have been a little erratic here and there. He can bring it. Look out. Jason Worth out in front hooking that one in. Jason Worth got the quick bat working tonight. That thing feels like a wiffle ball bat in his hands. You can just tell by the way he's wheeling it around. Have those nights as a player. You pick it up in your locker and, oh, it feels like tonight. I got a chance. Three balls in, two strikes with one out. And a double play ball hits sharply to Galvis. So the Nats will have to settle for a one run lead. And who's going to be the guy to get the save this time? Doug Fister has been warming.
Pacheco and Herrera for the Phillies and Duck Fister four saves his first year of professional baseball in Everett Washington in 2006 he hasn't had one since and hey why not channel your inner Everett Washington yeah if you're Doug Fister right here this reminds me of the night Dan Heron and his first yeah. career save in Atlanta a crazy game down there and uh, as the Nats make a double switch It'll be Tyler Moore taking over in left field. So Tyler will be the nine hole hitter. Cameron Rupp, he led off the ninth by striking out. And that was against Casey Jansen. Bullpen's been solid except for the one pitch by Papelbon. The only run they've given up tonight. Cameron Rupp facing. Doug Fister for the first time. Well, Doug hasn't been out there in a while. He's trying to get a feel for the strike zone right now. And he walked the leadoff man. Tying runs aboard. It's been a weird baseball game, I'll tell you what. It'll bring in Andres Blanco. It's an hour and five minutes away from being tomorrow. And the Nats and the Phillies will get together again. Steven Strasburg, eight and seven. David Buchanan, two and eight with a 9 1 1 ERA for the Phils. They're going to bunt right here. Uh, they don't have good wheels at first base. It would have to be a good one, and they're swinging away. Yeah. Jonathan Papelbon fielded that foul ball. Threw it up to some young fans. As mentioned earlier, Phillies don't have anybody who can pinch run here. Their last remaining player, catcher Carlos Ruiz. The bat is a base hit. And I'll tell you, that was a little confusing for Cameron Rupp. He came way off the bag. And some of the guys on the infield were wanting a throw to first. I think Jose Lobatone had him, but. There was a whole lot of stuff going on. Let's check it out together. So Clint Robinson has to fend for his life. I mean, he just had his first kid, for goodness sakes. He's got to get out of the way of that bad. I just said this game was weird. <laughs> no balls, two strikes. Example A? Exhibit A? That might be about exhibit yeah. K. Fister last pitch September 1st. Wow. That was an 8 5 St. Louis win over the Nats. Fister had to come in. That's a night Joe Ross walked six batters in two and two thirds, and Doug came in and pitched two and a third, gave up no runs on two hits. Pitched well to keep the Nats in a position. To compete in that game. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss at 88. One out, 11th inning. Top so, of the order, Herrera. 
some good late movement on this Doug Fister fastball. Watch starts out down the middle, runs to a corner. Odubel Herrera, 0 for 5 career against Doug. Was that kid announcing the game into a pen? I think he was. I think I saw him say swing and a miss. He's not announcing the game. He's biting his fingernails. Swing from the heels by Herrera. Well, you get guys that are coming up trying to end the game. And how do you prevent that? You stay away. You make them beat you the other way. Good pitch by Fister for strike one. Right now, Herrera is swinging at everything. Phillies are down to their final out. Doug Fister, another strikeout. A leadoff walk. He's starting to get back into the groove. Well, it's not easy pitching or playing this game once every two weeks. Doug Fister doing a nice job of trying to shut this thing down. Yeah, copy that. Freddie Galvis. Two for six career against Fister with an RBI. The reason we're still here with the homer off Papelbon to lead off the 10th. A drive to left. Tyler Moore is there, and the Nats win it 8 to 7 in 11. Easy W. Nothing to it. Right at the stroke of 11 p.m., three hours and 53 minutes for the Nats to pull one out, and Doug Fister gets his first major league save. For FP and Dan, I'm Bob. Strange days indeed. Most peculiar here at the ballpark tonight. Tomorrow night, it'll be Steven Strasburg for the Nats looking for number nine against David Buchanan of the Phillies. Nats Extra 630, as well as straight ahead with Johnny and Ray. This has been a presentation of Masson from the bank. See you later.